Hi, my name's Billy. I play Daniel in Seven Keys. Hello, my name is Emma McDonald and I play Lena in Seven Keys. Hi, I'm Joy Wilkinson and I'm the writer-director of Seven Keys. And Seven Keys is a cat and mouse thriller that keeps you on the edge of your seat about a couple who have, who have the keys to all the places he's lived in London and they use them for some nefarious purposes. The inspiration for Seven Keys came from my obsession with uh, property and keys and not being able to throw keys away when you've lived somewhere and thinking, what could you do if you went back into those places? Um, and I knew there was a story there, but I didn't know who had these keys. And then uh, there was a psychotherapist friend who was telling me about people at the opposite ends of the emotional spectrum being perfect for each other. So people who feel too much and people who can't feel at all. And suddenly it clicked into place and I knew who this couple were. Uh, and wrote them and it was such a roller coaster of a ride writing the script and discovering what they got up to in all these properties that he used to live in. Uh, so it kind of surprised me and I just knew it would surprise other people and thrill them too. So Lena's got a whole lot of love to give but not many people to, to give it to, uh, especially herself. Um, and at the start of the film she's a single mum and she's potentially going to lose her child. So she decides to go on this tour of London, and I suppose a tour of her old self. Uh, she's a very vulnerable character, but she doesn't give that much away. Um, she's she's very strong-willed, she's incredibly mischievous. Um, she's got a, a, a real wild side, um, and she likes to take risks with herself and other people. That was really good. Thank you. Um, Daniel. I find Daniel hard to explain fully um but uh as joy said he uh he sort of is an opposite to lena um but he uh i enjoyed playing his journey through from sort of very nervous very uh, anxious then going on to actually enjoying the game that they start to play together so yeah he goes on a big ride, doesn't he? They, he goes on they a both big ride. Yeah, both characters go from, you know, it's it's one to seven keys, but it's kind of A to Z of all the emotions. The thing that really inspired me writing it was the way that society gets really polarized now, and so uh, the kind of the far right and and the bleeding heart liberals will never meet in the middle and never find a way to understand each other. And this was almost a way of articulating that through a relationship. And uh, so they were coming from their ends of the spectrum into the middle to kind of discover each other. And uh, it's it's almost like the dance of the seven veils. So they're going to these different locations and almost like peeling a layer off and discovering each other one part at a time, um, which was very sexy to write, uh, but also then got very dangerous uh, and then very moving, I hope. Um, so so it was a, a big ride for me, as I hope it will be for everyone watching it. The relationship between Lena and Daniel is almost like a dance, I think. Um, we did a lot of movement work as well early on, um, which helped sort of you discover yourself in those in those keys in those places um and also help you discover each other how you feel um when you're maybe more sort of childlike and vulnerable when you're more powerful um so we played we we played nicely with that um and movement again yeah was was really important uh, and and yeah there are sort of intimacy as well emma and i are also a couple so <laughs> That helps. Uh, <laughs> um, and we've been wanting to work together and Joy very kindly gave it gave us the opportunity to do that. Um, and it was a wicked experience to like just romp around London together, breaking into people's houses. Um, but then also I found the hardest thing was um, sort of pretending I didn't know Emma. Do you know what I mean? Starting out not knowing her knowing Lena, Daniel knowing Lena, not Billy knowing Emma. I mean, it's the actor's job, but sometimes you get kind of carried away. And um, I, I love the way that they sort of kind of go in opposite. She's well up for it at first, and then he's like not so sure. And then there's a turning point in a bath scene. I don't want to give too much away, but um, 
where I think there's the one point where they meet in the middle almost and then they kind of go separate ways. It's like, yeah, it's cool. It's, it, that scene seems like the one point where they're both on the exact same level and they truly see each other. And they truly connect. Mm -hmm. You do get a lot of trust with that, that that um, you could go into locations and sort of let them play together and, and discover things together, which you wouldn't get if you were completely starting from scratch. But um, as Billy says, that the, the difficult thing is the unlearning things and, and sort of putting that knowledge of each other back in the box but but they absolutely aced it and and you really you really see them both completely transform over the course of the film just that thing of working someone out when you don't know them working where their boundaries are and things like that um that was that was a fun discovery i'd like to highlight joy's like kindness and care and generosity and lack of preciousness over her script her baby which she is also directing and then allowing emma and i to come in and go but what if we did this and then allowing us to a certain extent to play with it and see what see what happened and then and then allowing the camera to come in and film what we'd come up with was um and when you're very short on time, which you are with yeah, an individual. But I think that's where the magic happens. Yeah. That's where collaboration happens. And it's it's you know, it's it's one sort of directing to go, I know exactly what I want and you must do this. But actually there's there's a sort of beauty and a, and a chemistry in just letting go of that and seeing what comes out of these brilliant talents around yeah. you. And that's what filmmaking's really about for me. I've been a writer for a long time and, and written lots of things that other people have directed. And I've also written and directed my shorts. Uh, and I, I, I was ready for somebody else to direct this at one point. Um, and then I kind of realized it wasn't going to happen. And it was at exactly the point that I was ready to direct a feature. So it seemed like fate, really. And I took it back and retooled it for me. And suddenly it took on this life that it had never had when I was writing it for somebody else. So it was obviously meant to be. Uh, and that's actually a refrain in the film is meant to be. And I feel like there's so many spooky things in this that have turned out the way that if somebody else had directed it, it would never have come out that way. So, um, and I wanted Emma and Billy to be in it for the longest time as well. So, so for me to have the power to, to ask them and to invite them into it, um, I, I feel like uh, it was always going to be this film and it was always going to be this film now at South By as well. It's the perfect place for it. This was very collaborative, I think, because we also have a background in theatre where a lot of the, there's much less hierarchy and it's much less, much less monolithic. Uh, and I think that's also massive generalisation. But I think as a female director, I'm, I'm much less into the sort of monolithic model of the soul genius. It's still absolutely my vision and, and, and I, I do get the final say, but I do not think that I know better than everybody else on that set and everybody on that set is a storyteller and if somebody has a great idea bring it on in um, and I think that's where you get um, a, a really kind spirit on set as well I mean everybody said it, it was a, a really warm place and a playful place and you could create even though we were making it in 18 days <laughs> so so it wasn't that there wasn't pressure but but it was a it was a creative pressure on Joy set it felt like you were completely liberated and safe to really push things um, and to play and go to places where you would be very dark and, and it would be very vulnerable, but you were safe to do so. Um, and you didn't necessarily know how the take was going to play out. And for me, that is the most fun work that you could possibly do, not knowing exactly where the scene's going to go. And I think because of the relationship that, that we have as well, we were very safe to do so. And we could push it. Exactly. And it was it was a, it was a lot of fun to do that. Um, and you felt very supported by everyone around you in every department. And um, I think it comes across in the tension of the thriller as well. That mm. if you as actors don't know where the other actor might be taking the scene, that comes through, doesn't it? In mm. the sort of adrenaline feeling when you're watching it. That, like, yeah, the kind of edge of your seat, what yeah. is actually going to happen? Yeah. Who are these people? And... It, with the characters as well, I think they're not necessarily instantly likable people. No, but you brought that. You brought you brought a, a kind of light in the eyes and yeah. and a mischief to it. Yeah. As collaborative as you are, I think Joy, you always had such a strong 
Like your your instinct and your gut mm-hmm. is always so bang on. And I remember there was times when there was loads of voices happening on set, like, wait, what should we do? Should we go with this or this and this? And you always just were like through. this. And it was yeah, it was a it was a joy to watch joy work. But we've what, discovered things together as well. Well, this like, is it. Been... It felt a bit like Lena and Daniel. We could go into these places and discover them and let Emma look in the cupboards and, you know, show Daniel to the bed. It was it was like Lena and Daniel in a way, wasn't yeah. it? And that's what's exciting about the sets as well. There were like there were these places that we were breaking into, like that thing you go in and you could imagine instantly going oh god that's someone else's like unfinished cup of tea or like that's someone and like that <laughs> that thing is something that's exciting in all of us i think like well, we're not supposed to be here yeah. but it's like um so yeah it wasn't that wasn't so much of a stretch of no. uh, um imagination that was like that felt very real and i remember getting nervous as well like mm. for daniel i guess but also as billy like waiting to break into somewhere even though we were fake breaking into somewhere like you still feel like transgression oh like someone could come around the corner any minute like but even the way that we were filming someone could come around the corner i think we had like 10 people in a tiny toilet at one point it was kind of this like oh yeah that gorilla (laughs) film person like perched on the edge of a bathtub three people hiding in like behind a shower curtain yeah um it was wild yeah but in the best way 